The American Taxpayer Relief Act went into effect in January of this year. Several changes could in Packed income deductions. Here to explain some of those changes is Rafael Tolino with the IRS. And Rafael, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Now, unless Congress acts to change some things before the end of the year, there will be a number of deductions expiring. What are some of those top deductions? Yeah, that law, as you said, came along in January of this year, 2013, and it made good several extenders for 2012 and 2013. So some of those that are expiring unless Congress acts, as you say, include the teacher deduction, out-of-pocket expenses for full-time educators, the sales tax deduction will disappear, the mortgage forgiveness uh, relief deduction, in other words, if you're short sale or foreclosure, you have debt forgiven. Per this law, if you qualify, you can have that debt not be taxed, normally it is. Uh, the uh, PMI, uh, mortgage insurance of 20%, that's deductible, that will go away. And there are a uh, few more worth mentioning uh, but those are the big ones right off the top. Uh, you know, you definitely want to keep those in mind as you do some tax Make planning. Make sure when you're doing your yeah. tax planning. The, um, there's also some changes on tax investments. Tell us about those. Well, the net investment, net investment tax came along, and that's for uh, higher income taxpayers. It's 3.8% generally on top of uh, capital gains, which could make your capital gain, depending on your income, at 23.8% as opposed to 20%. The Medicare tax at 0.9% as well, and those came along. Uh, in the Affordable Care Act. But when we're talking about, uh, let's talk about that Medicare uh, tax, is that also for a uh, higher income as well through the uh, it's, Yeah, it's an, extra, it's an extra 0.9%. Okay, but mm -hmm. based on your income level yeah, and yeah, yep. typically over uh, 300,000, I believe. Generally uh, for uh, higher income earners, correct. Um, let's talk about this, the overturning of the Defense uh, of Marriage Act, or DOMA. How does that impact uh, same sex couples filing uh, this year? So we had a ruling that came along in August after the Supreme Court made that decision that basically recognizes for federal tax purposes same-sex couples no matter what state you were married no matter where you live now uh, as uh, as same-sex to, to qualify as married filing joint on a, on a federal income tax return. In other words, it, it gives them a lot more as they, that, that folks that... Uh, same same, same yeah. deduction, same... Uh, Generally it, speaking, yes. For estate and gift tax, for example, those purposes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks ran into... We've seen those folks run into issues there in terms of what do you do in terms of an estate. This, this ruling, this law that came along that we passed and we provided guidance for I really see. provides a lot more to that. Okay, and I understand that there's a, quite a, a sinister phone scam going along uh, that's targeting certain uh, groups yeah. in regards to taxes. Yeah, this is different from a phishing scam email. This is an actual phone call, and it tends to prey on those who are recent immigrants. And it's a phone call saying, hey, you owe taxes. We need it paid this way, a prepaid debit card or a wire transfer. And if you don't do this, we're going to threaten you by taking away a business license, your driver's license, that kind of a thing. And it's really sinister because of all the nuances involved. They seem to know the last four of your SSN. They can mimic a call site, make it sound like that. They can call back. They can spoof the IRS toll-free number so as it on looks caller like, ID. So it looks like there's a toll-free number. They've got the last right. four digits of your Social Security number. So it looks legit. And, and they're asking for taxes owed immediately, and they're asking it done a certain way. We are not going to call you about taxes owed, especially and until you, we need to pay it a certain way. If you're going to get contact with the IRS, it's a letter in the mail, letter in the mail, letter in the mail. Some point down the line, you may get a phone call from the IRS, but after you've received these letters in the mail, and after, chances are, you know you have so, obligations So just to be clear, yeah. you would the IRS would never call somebody and say, please wire us money and, yeah. and, and please send us a, a debit card, a prepaid debit card. Out of the blue phone call from the IRS demanding taxes owed, done in a certain way, scam. Scam. Yeah. All right. And I know that uh, the IRS has a, a checklist to help people prepare for taxes uh, at the end of the year. G give us a few oh, highlights of that. Yeah, end of year, charitable contributions. Take a look at that. A lot of folks make charitable contributions. If your goal is a legitimate tax deduction, make sure it is so, and there are rules on the IRS website. You can go there for rules as to how that works. You have to be itemizing on an IRS Schedule A, in other words, in order to benefit, that kind of thing. Uh, certainly, check your investments. You can deduct up to $3,000 in capital losses on the front side of your return if you wish to kind of cut short a loss, so to speak. Uh, consider your retirement accounts, those kinds of things. Uh, take a look at where you are in terms of your withholdings. If you get a big tax refund, make some adjustments now or even plan for 2014. So and you they, have a better idea going forward. Okay, and they can get that checklist. We can find that checklist on the IRS website. IRS.gov has, at some point later on in December, we usually issue a release with a couple of weeks left. We'll see what kind of time we have this year. But okay. IRS.gov is a good spot for everything. All right, so yeah. good information. Yeah. Rafael Tolino with the IRS. Thank you very much. Anytime.